This brief tutorial will give you an introduction to how content management systems work. Now if you think about your computer requesting a website through the internet, you have just two major players. You have your computer on one end. Your computer is going to send a request such as get httpprofgarrett.com which will then get routed by the internet to some server somewhere. It doesn't really matter where the server is. It could be on your local network, it could be in Indonesia, it makes a very little difference. On the server then, it's responsible for creating an HTML page, which then gets sent back into the internet, which is then handed off to your computer. So then your browser, such as Firefox or Internet Explorer, has a nice page that then, then shows to you. The issue that we have with content management systems is how this particular document is generated, and that's what this particular tutorial is about. So, in the simplest possible case, you have a request for a plain HTML document. So you have the request coming in from the internet. It goes through the cables into your server. In your server is a particular piece of software called a web server. This web server could be something like Apache or Microsoft IIS or one of the other variants that are out there. In most cases, for a simple document, the web server software just goes to the hard drive. It says the hard drive, hey, I need this particular document. The hard drive was responsible for finding the document, return it to the website server, which is then returned to the end user. So very straightforward, very fast, very efficient. However, this is not the most common way that websites are built nowadays. Most websites nowadays use some sort of back-end programming language, such as PHP. So we start out in a very similar pattern. We have some requests coming in from the user, coming in through our, our um, internet connection here going to the server, to the web server software, and to a hard drive. The difference happens when the document being returned has something like this. You see we'll have little PHP codes here. This is saying that instead of being a plain HTML document, it actually should be executed in a separate process. So we have our third party here, PHP. And again, I'm simplifying the process here to make it easier to understand. So we have a request coming from the server, it hits our web server. We have it go to the hard drive and find a particular document. What happens next is that that document is actually going to be routed to our PHP program. This is a program running in memory on the server. Just as our hard drive has a space to work in, PHP has a space to work in as well. And this space to work in is actually going to be held in RAM instead of on the disk. So for our software, it's going to go ahead and run the code in this file line by line. So starting with this right here, it's going to say echo, which basically means to take the stuff inside the quotes and put it out to a new HTML document. So it's going to, after it runs that line of code, it will have this document. This document is then returned to the web server, which is then given to the client. Now frequently you have a database being involved in this process as well. So you have a request from a server, goes to the hard drive, finds that we have PHP here. For a PHP, we then are going to execute line by line the code that we have. So with the first line, it's just going to echo this HTML P. Then we see on the next line we have this echo get HTML from the database function. That function then is going to involve our next player, the database. The database is the main way in which we store HTML documents, user information, or other content on the website, on the internet. So at this point, PHP is responsible to go to the database. The database will find some content, return it to PHP, which will then get added to that new page in memory. PHP then executes the last echo statement, which then adds on the closing P and HTML, which you can see up here. This document is then being returned to the web server, which is then re returned to the client. So again, this is a simplified version of how it actually works, but hopefully it should be enough for you to see the process and the major players involved in creating a dynamic website. So to compare the two approaches, we first have static files. These are very, very fast and very easy. It's very straightforward to retrieve a document from the disk and smarter web servers will actually store those documents in memory as well, so it can be very, very fast. A content management system is much, much slower. 
It depends upon the particular kind of system being used and how efficient it is, but something on the lines of 2 to 10 requests per second is not unreasonable. This is much harder to maintain. We have a lot more parts, a lot more pieces. It takes much more of a back-end programmer to be able to set it up properly for you. However, there are some advantages. First off, we can update it through a website. Instead of having to use an FTP program to go in and edit the files manually, we can just log in to a nice system, change content, and click on Save. The other thing that we get that's very important is that it is customized. When we go to that database, we could return an email for Bob or for Mary. We could generate a unique set of news items. We could do a huge range of things. Versus a static file, static files don't change. Every time the user logs in, they see the exact same thing. So we find that content management systems are used for most complex websites on the internet. So this is usually generating what's called HTML. That's the actual code that has most of the content for a website. We still have static files being served though. Most content management systems use a static system to retrieve things like images, style sheets, or JavaScript code. Things that don't change each request are typically used through static file approach. But generally the main website runs through a content management system. I hope this was useful and gave you a basic introduction of how a content management system works.